monetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. We've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filters today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Hi, I'm Janet Napolitano, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Homeland Security begins with hometown security. It seems apparent that our citizens are staying off the streets, which may make scarring particularly difficult, even with this year's rule changes. To recap those revisions, women are still worth 10 points more than men in all age brackets. But teenagers now rack up 40 points, and toddlers under 12 now rate a big 70 points. The big score, anyone, any sex over 75 years old has been up to 100 points. As always, how fast you move determines how long you live. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I was just talking to Kyle in Pennsylvania about the out-of-control police in Albuquerque and the response of the people there. We had a protester who was quoted as saying that he was fed up with how the police are treating citizens there. It's reached a boiling point, he said, and people can't take it anymore. Over 500 people showed up for more than a 10-hour protest. They want the police chief to be fired. The police department there, even before this last shooting, was under investigation from the Department of Justice because there have been so many shootings there, so many more than the average, so many more than even New York City, which has 16 times the number of people there. So there's clearly something wrong. The taxpayers are getting hit with tens of millions of dollars in judgments in Albuquerque. 
what do we as citizens do about it? And Kyle, you were saying that there's, there's good police officers out there. There certainly are. And as we've done a report over and over again in Albuquerque and in New Mexico, those good police officers get put out. We had a report uh, as Albuquerque police are trained to shoot first. Take a look at that. That was something that we did for the nightly news. It's now up on the Alex Jones channel. It talks about this very department and it also talks about a chief of police in a small town, Shane Harger, who on his way to a constitutional sheriffs and peace officers association meeting was harassed by the TSA and the video that I've seen from the events, he was very respectful. But you know, there's a breaking point for anybody when you get when you get accosted by the TSA unconstitutionally over and over again. And he was threatened and he had his entire small town police force disbanded and he was fired ultimately. First he was put on suspension and then he was fired. And when I did an investigation of this, I found that the local television station was trying to demonize him for having two IDs, saying that was why he was being hassled by the TSA and there was implying that there was something shady about that. The reason the guy had two IDs was because of a suspected homicide by an Albuquerque police officer. And he was first on the scene and he would not change his story. And as a result, there's a lot of things that happened to that. He was in fear of his life. I suggest you take a look at that. I'm not going to go into the entire report. It's a very interesting story. But what happens is there are good cops and they get pushed out by the corrupt cops. And that's a great example of what happened in that story. Very sad story to see that happen to him. And I don't know what the current resolution of that is. I don't know if he is uh, suing to get reinstated. But uh, Kyle, did you want to say something else? Kyle in Pennsylvania. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a certain code of conduct that we as a society have uh, you know, uniformly decided as, as a certain way a police officer should behave. And we need to realize that once an officer starts acting outside of that code of conduct, he's no longer an officer. He's a civilian, general population. So if a police officer shoots a clearly troubled person who's illegally camping in the woods for no reason, he doesn't get to be tried as a police officer who shot a man in the woods. He needs to be tried as a murderer. And he That's needs right. to be tried just like anybody else who would shoot an unarmed, innocent man. Um, you know, and as for the riots in Albuquerque, I'm sorry, but 90% of our communication is nonverbal. So when the police show up dressed like stormtroopers in, yes. in armor and shields yes. with tear gas. What are you communicating? Yes. You're communicating violence. You're saying, okay, there's going to be a rumble here, yep. one way or another. That's but right. I, so we need they're escalating. You're, you're breaking up an excellent point. When they show up, it is a confrontation. It is always a confrontation. And they are itching to get violent because they have been trained by Homeland Security that you are the enemy. They want to, they're militarizing the police. They are looking at the American streets as a battlefield. That's what the NDAA is about. They're assuming, they're making the assumption that it's a battlefield. And so you've got the police being militarized. You've got the military being used as police. Let's go to uh, Josh in Georgia. Thank you, Kyle. Josh in Georgia, you wanted to say something about the uh, situation in Albuquerque or the police in general? Yes, uh, and I'm, I apologize. I've got you on speakerphone here. I want to read something, if you don't mind. Okay, go ahead. Uh, in quote, citizens may resist unlawful arrest to the point of taking an arresting officer's life if necessary. Bloomer versus State, 136 Indiana.306. This premise was upheld by the Supreme Court of the United States in the case John Bad Elk v. U.S. 177, U.S. 529. The court stated, where the officer is killed in the course of the disorder which naturally accompanies an attempted arrest that is resisted, the law looks very differently. Uh, with with very different eyes upon the transaction when the officer had the right to make the arrest from what it does if the officer, officer had no right. What may be murder in the first case might not be anything more than manslaughter in the other, or the facts might show that no offense has been committed at all. Uh, another quote, uh, an arrest yeah, made well, with a... I, I, I absolutely understand and I absolutely agree that we all have an inherent right of self-defense. And when the police or any other government official gets outside of the bounds of their lawful authority, what they've taken an oath to, they no longer have that authority. 
If you disobey the Constitution, if you disobey your oath, you're out of line of your authority. You're no longer a lawful authority. But I want to see this taken care of in a way that doesn't come down to us fighting it out in the streets with the police. Because, quite frankly, you can defend yourself against a cop, but they will kill you if the things don't change the way they currently are. So how do we as a society take this back? There has to be some kind of... The, the mayors, the city council, and of course the people that are in there are not doing it now. We have to get people elected at the local level. And right now, the local level is really where we have the best chance of an election. Elections are very rigged at the national level, especially at the presidential level. You know, whoever is counting the votes is going to determine the election, and they've got a lot of different ways that they can rig the election. But at the local level, we have a better chance of having honest elections. We need to get people who are going to stand up, in my opinion, and are going to say they're going to be penal they're going to be penalties, not just for the taxpayer when the police overstep this. There's going to be consequences and penalties, financial judgments. If they can't convict these people because the police unions are so strong, at least they can say that you as a police officer are going to be liable for these these damages in an unlawful death case. And then Anything over and above what you're able to supply in those judgments is going to be taken out of the budget of the police department, let's say. Let's start trying to do some things like that to try to get them under control. The biggest part of the problem is, as Kyle was talking about, we have a, a due process and yet they, they're not treated. They should be treated just as an ordinary criminal if they kill someone, but they're not treated that way. They get special treatment as an officer. They're not even questioned in the same way. If you go back and you look at the rules that the police unions have put in, the officers are not even questioned as criminal suspects in the same way that you or I would be questioned. Josh, did you want to say anything else? Yes. Uh, well, to, to, to curb it is, you know, people need to start standing up. I, I've, I've said, you know, if the, the First Amendment is the voice, the Second Amendment is the teeth, the Fourth Amendment is the brain. And if we don't start standing up for, for any of them, we're, we're not going to have any of them. And the, we've, we've turned into a society of watchers. If we see something and we know that it's wrong, we pull out our phones or we pull out our cameras and we video it, but we don't help. And those people are still, even, even people that come to the rescue and come to the aid of someone being illegally detained are, are you know, allowed to. Yeah. And until we actually start standing up and saying no and doing something and cr drawing a line in the sand and saying no more and, and coming I understand. through and, yeah. and following through with it, it's going to continue to happen. I understand. You know, there's a lot. That you've heard the thing before about the different boxes of power that we have. We've got the jury box. We've got the cartridge box. We've got the ballot box. Actually, we've got the soap box as well. But, you know, I think that we need to try to use the ballot box as much as we can because once we get to the cartridge box we're going to be going up against their strength in many ways because it's kind of be, kind of going to be like uh, when the revolutionary war was going on they didn't win too many battles when they just lined up and fought the british on their own terms you know getting in a straight line and shooting each other they won when they were pursuing asymmetric warfare and of course you could even say that about a a cartridge box situation but Let's try to get control of the state and the local city governments. If we can get control of that and then get control of the police, I think that would be the way to resolve this, hopefully. Jerry and thank you. Uh, uh, let's go to Jerry in Georgia. Jerry? Hi, David. Um, thank you for taking my call. I wanted to make a uh, point about what's on the top of Drudge, um, the internal Homeland Security document. It ties into all this. And in the fact that we're treated like criminals, just uh, you got a guy who's down on his luck, he's camping out and he's treated like a criminal. They SWAT team him. But if you look at the internal Homeland Security document, 68,000 convicted illegal alien criminals were released, caught and released. Yeah. If 872,000 whose visas have run out and have been ordered to leave the country are just floating around, have never left. And they say that they're surveilling us for our safety, but these people are just floating around. They, they wiretap us. They take they, all our phone records, metadata us for our safety, but these people are just floating around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and 
as far as the Albuquerque, if you watch the video, he was murdered. They, yes. they had non-lethal.